from what the deep part of the ocean is like to what lives in it and more. Join me as we explore the question of what it would be like to take a trip to the Mariana Trench. In terms of mystery, as well as being the least explored place on Earth, few places are as deep and unexplored as the Mariana Trench. This is mainly because the Mariana Trench is 36,000 feet below sea level. It's so deep that if you don't have a specifically made craft, the pressure of the ocean would crush you in an instant. Furthermore, because of how deep it is, there is no light from the sun or sky that reaches down there, so thus the only lights you'll have are the ones on your ship. Fun fact, only four humans in history have ever been able to go to the Mariana Trench. The first two were in 1960. Swiss oceanographer Jacques Picard and USN Lieutenant Don Walsh went down in a special submarine and are in fact the two humans to go the deepest into the ocean. However, they only lasted about 20 minutes before their submarine had to be surfaced because of the pressure of the ocean. The other came 52 years later in the form of the one and only James Cameron, who went down in a single-man pod and stayed there for quite some time before surfacing back up. Then, in 2019, American Victor Vescafos took a sub and actually hit the very bottom of the trench and stayed there for four hours. While their accomplishments are noteworthy in every way, it goes to show that while they've been to the bottom of the trench, or close to it, they don't really know everything that's down there. Until we get a craft down there that can be there for extended periods, there's no way of knowing all that resides with the Mariana Trench. What's more, there are some who believe that there are places nearby that are even deeper than the trench, though this has not been definitively proven. And even if it could be proven, it's unlikely that we could reach it right now given the various factors about the trench itself. But let's look at this from the objective sense. If you were to get a boat and then a submarine to get to the Mariana Trench, what would it be like as you went down into the depths of the ocean? What would you see and experience? Well, let's start at the beginning with where the Mariana Trench is on a map of the world. The Mariana Trench is located in the western Pacific Ocean about 124 miles outside the Mariana Islands, hence the name. So thus, you can't just fly to the Mariana Trench. You'll have to go and get a boat to take you there, and you'll likely have a nice view of various islands and oceans to see as you get even closer to the spot where you dive dive, dive! Anyway, once you reach the spot, you'll head into your submersible and get ready to dive down into the depths of the ocean. This is something that many people have done in their own right over the last 150 years-ish. The trench was first founded in 1875. At the top of the ocean, as you go down, you're going to see a lot of very familiar things. You'll see fishes in the water, creatures of various kinds, and potentially, depending on your team, you can even see human swimmers around making sure that you're going down safely and aren't hitting any immediate obstacles. This is because the top parts of the water are technically some of the easiest to live in. The water is spacious, planet life can be all over the place depending on the topography of the place, and because of the lack of pressure, most sea life can live there without issue. This is why you can dive into the waters with nothing but a breath of air and not feel anything wrong outside of your lungs wanting more air because there's nothing pressing against you in a significant way. So thus, the earliest parts of your adventure are going to be some of the smoothest sailing you'll have on your adventure. But as you can probably tell via the sound of my voice, things will get more complicated as you go further down the depths of the ocean. Before we get to the deeper parts of the ocean and the Mariana Trench, be sure to like or dislike the video so we can continue to improve and make you the best videos possible. Also, be sure to subscribe so that way you don't miss any of our weekly videos. As you reach about 65 feet below sea level, you'll start noticing a different type of sea world, pun intended, opening up. You'll see a bunch of coral reefs around, again depending on where exactly you're heading down into the trench. What's more, you'll still see people here, but this time it'll be as scuba divers, as by this point not only will the pressure of the ocean be a lot more intense, but that far down, it'd be very hard to dive down and get back up with one breath. People have proven this to be wrong, though, but they were trained and the average person couldn't do it. Once you reach about 140 feet below sea level, the pressure is too much for scuba divers to continue, or at least the scuba divers that are there for recreational purposes. More on that in a bit. As you reach about 200 feet below sea level, you'll start to notice more and more whales. Specifically, you'll see orcas, aka killer whales, as well as whale sharks, the biggest sharks in the world today, and the biggest fish in the world today as sharks are fish. 
Both of these creatures are impressive in their own rights, but you've got a lot more to see as you continue to dive further down. If you hit 330 feet, you'll notice scuba divers again. But these aren't your average Joe divers. These are professional scuba divers. They are ones with even more specialized equipment than your regular divers. Some of them are even paid to dive into the deepest parts of the ocean that are possible by humans, of course, so that they can explore underwater caves and such. But they are also in serious trouble because if they rise to the surface of the ocean too fast, they can die via decompression sickness. As you keep going down, you're going to see some octopuses, specifically the giant Pacific octopus, but what you'll see from here is a bit tricky. You see, at around 500 feet below sea level, you'll reach what is known as the dark zone of the ocean. For at this depth, only 1% of all light from the sun reaches this depth, which means the further you go down, the darker and darker it'll get. Which is why submersibles like the ones our four brave adventurers from before had were equipped with lighting fixtures that could withstand the pressure of the ocean so that they could see what was all around them. The deeper you go, the more exotic of life you're going to see, such as the giant oarfish, the Japanese spider crab, and more. And as you reach 1,640 feet, you'll see the magnificent blue whale at its deepest depths. These majestic creatures are the biggest creatures on the planet right now, and many fight to keep them alive despite many countries hunting them down for their oil and blubber. At around 3,300 feet below sea level, you'll reach a key point in the ocean, the Midnight Zone. It is here that no sunlight pierces the veil, as it were, meaning that all around you will be pure darkness outside of the faintest traces of light that are emitted by the animals and plants that live there at times. This is known as bioluminescence, and many creatures of the deep and the depths to come have this so that they can both see and ward off predators, or in some cases, lure in prey. But there's another point to this depth that needs to be made because at the depth you are at, the pressure of the ocean is squeezing on you so tightly that if a human body somehow drifted down into this depth without having protection from a metal sub, they'd be crushed into nothing in seconds flat. Not the best way to go, don't you think? At 4,200 feet, you'll see the deepest depth that one of the most terrifying predators of the ocean can go to, the great white shark. Yeah, they live in shallow waters mostly, but they don't mind getting deep, and because of how they hunt via their noses and electrical signals and not sunlight, they don't mind the darkness. As you reach 6,000 feet, you'll have met a major landmark, if you are on land, because that's the depth of the deepest point in the Grand Canyon. But for this trench, we have many times that depth to go before we reach the bottom. At 7,400 feet, you'll find the deepest that any whale species can reach, in this case, the sperm whale one of the most aggressive whales in the world. But in truth, why would they need to go this far down to live in any situation is a bit of a mystery. When you get to 9,900 feet below sea level, you'll get to witness something that only a few have ever laid eyes on, deep sea coral reefs. These treasures of the ocean are in every single ocean in the world, but because they're in the midnight zone, you can't see them unless you shine your light on them. Here's a fact I bet you didn't know. At 12,100 feet, you'll have reached the ocean floor, or most oceans in the world. Yeah, there's an average depth to the oceans of the world, and you just crossed it. Not that there's a sign that says, you've crossed the ocean floor's average, but hey, we can dream. The ironic thing, though, is that to get to the depths, you have to go three times that depth. So, let's do it. All right, once you get to 19,700 feet, you'll reach the upper edge of the Mariana Trench. But wait a minute. You said at the beginning that it was 36,000 feet deep. And it is. The deepest parts of it are 36,000 feet below sea level. But everything has a top and a bottom. But because of the uniqueness of the trench, people prefer to use the bottom number to show off its depth. Anyway, if you get to 19,700 feet below sea level, you are indeed in the Mariana Trench, which is where our four explorers from before were able to reach and beyond. Not to mention, Certain discoveries between them and unmanned vehicles were made, such as the snailfish, which is the deepest fish ever found. How deep was it found at? 26,000 feet below sea level. Though it is technically unproven, scientists believe that anything below this point is beyond the scope of most normal animals, meaning vertebrates. The reason for this is believed to be the pressure that the waters at this point in the Mariana Trench. But does that mean that there is no life at the bottom? No, not exactly. As you reach the deepest parts of the trench, you'll reach a spot known as the Challenger Deep. 
and it is here that creatures known as invertebrates, which include shrimp and other creatures, as well as microbes exist. There is also very likely all sorts of plant life that is around in certain forms. But as for what you will actually see if you go there, that's unclear, mainly because it hasn't been fully explored. James Cameron was the first to reach this depth for a significant amount of time, but even he didn't get to the full bottom. He reached 35,787 feet below sea level, a couple hundred feet short of the max depth 36,037 feet. And even then, he could only stay there for a few hours in the exact same spot, observing everything he could via his cameras and video recorders. Needless to say, it was a pretty big deal, and the man from 2019, Victor Vescovo, had an even deeper dive by about 50 feet and he still wasn't able to explore it all. So, in short, if you wanted someone to paint a picture of what the bottom of the Challenger Deep was, you'd likely have to look at the video footage and extrapolate exactly what is there because the answers aren't something you can find in a textbook or even online in certain ways. This is a major reason why more people want to take trips to the bottom of the Mariana Trench because there's still so much left to explore. Think about it, there are mysteries there that we don't have on land, such as how the fish and creatures in the waters can survive with the pressures put upon them, how they evolved in such a way to live down there without issue, and of course, the question of how many new species of animals and plants are down there. Just when Cameron was down there, he discovered many new species and further attempts have done various discoveries as well. Imagine if a man craft was able to stay down there for days instead of hours, the discoveries could be life-changing. And that is why the Mariana Trench is still such a wonder and a mystery to this day, because we know some things about it, but not all, and as this dive into the oceans has hopefully shown you, there are many wonders to see and experience the deeper you go. Thanks for watching, everyone! What did you think of this look at the Mariana Trench and what it is like to dive into its depths? Did you learn something new about the ocean? Do you yourself want to go and do a dive into the Mariana Trench? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the channel.